All right, here we go again. Hi, Donna. Hi, Deborah. Hi, everybody. This is crazy. It's asking again for everybody. Everybody's being put into the weight room. We'll have to figure this out. But anyway, it's they've made it very user friendly. Hi, Ashlyn. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited you're here. So I'm going to be multitasking for just a second just to let everybody in. So excited to be here. I was so ready for tonight. I'm so ready for all of your positive, incredible energy. Um, you guys are truly what make our industry so much fun is the way we collaborate we support and help one another and this is just one of those ways that we come together on a weekly basis and we just learn and we grow and we exchange ideas and you know I think that I think about Ashlyn and you know she never dreamed she would be in this business I don't think and she really when she was introduced to it she found she had this talent and these gifts and I mean every time I look at her work I'm just like I'm in awe I'm like I will never be that good and that's the beauty we we are just everyday women some of us have these super skills and we're naturally so gifted and we can come into this and then other like others like me who've been in the business for 30 years I, I will learn five new things today so so I selfishly love this for myself but then I also love that we can give it to all of our customers right because we actually have this set up in our YouTube channel and guys there's like 30 different women who have taught us all their special skills. Um, you know, whatever it is we want to learn, we make it happen. I'm still admitting people, we get to make that happen. And it's just, it is, I love that this business can happen online like this. I love that I've got a beauty bar Tuesday night, but if I didn't want to, I could meet with my customers online. And it's so much fun uh, the way that we've been doing this, even during a pandemic, <laughs> even during COVID, we have all found a way because really the greatest part of our business is the way that we get to connect with people. That's truly what it's about. So, so if you don't know about Lime Life, and then I'm going to hand this right over to beautiful Ashlyn, um, Lime Life has been around, believe it or not Lime Life, as in by Alcone, the Alcone store in New York City has been around for decades, like 70 years, selling professional makeup, only professional makeup, and it's the only direct sales company that has professional makeup to the uh, celebrity community. Mostly to have had access to this, you would have had to have had a celebrity makeup artist or known a pro makeup artist. It wasn't available to the public until six years ago when Michelle Millardi, the owner, she wanted a way to get this in the hands of everyday women because she saw how beautiful women felt and she realized that this was like a missing link. And with today, as we know it, with retail closing down, with you know people not wanting to go to Sephora and to the department stores and to Ulta, we have just really been in a beautiful spot to bring women in and to really still make them feel beautiful. Because let's face it, when we look good, we feel good, right? When we look good, we feel good. So, so yes, if you're a guest, if you'll just say where you're from, if you're a beauty guide, if you'll say where you're from, if there's a tip you want to learn, because I know we've watched Ashlyn before, if there's something you're like really excited to learn about, let us know. But but just know that you are you are in if you're getting to watch watch this someone has exposed you to this celebrity makeup and it is like I literally just did my face I was talking to my son I'm like I just do my face in like three minutes and it looks so different at 50 than it did for 25 30 years with my prior company because of the the amazing moldability of this makeup and just how it acts as second skin so I, I feel so grateful that I get to use it and then I get to share it with women that I love and just everyday women get to feel like celebrities that's really what it's about and then we have the pro that the, the we have the plant-based skincare y'all if somebody would have told me this was available, I would have been using this. I, before you had to refrigerate skincare, you had to, the preservatives had to be refrigerated. It was, it was not like today where they have learned so much, where they, they took chemist and information so that we could be able to have a safe, very effective product. And those of you that use these products, you know that you get results. Like we were using in our prior company probably 20 items to what I now use about five. 
Um, so it is truly a blessing to have access to not only great makeup, but skincare that is very unique in the marketplace. We're full of essential oils. We're full of things that make your skin just feel luxurious. Like my skin feels like luxury because I get to use a wipe that is not full of chemicals, okay? The wipes that are out there, the Neutrogena wipes, guys, go look up lawsuits and Neutrogena wipes. It'll blow your mind because chemicals are reacting with people's skin and especially now in the environment we're in, people are having more and more sensitivities with their skin. No chemicals. We literally, Monday, were doing my daughter's engagement pictures and I had to run in and buy some of these things because we had to make a quick change. And her face lit up and I was like, I'm really sorry. I will never leave home without these again. So I got to see it firsthand. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spotlight a beautiful Ashlyn. Ashlyn, can you hear me? Are you there? I think you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, I, I love your voice. I love your voice. It's so <laughs> Thank awesome. you. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, I've missed your face. I'm so excited to have you back. I think I was looking and it's been maybe a couple months since you've been here. So uh, I hear you have a little one there. Yes, you do. Yes, she's right here. So if you hear any noises or music, it's her. Aww, and you know what? I mean, honestly, I've done this business for 30 years and I had a three month old, so I can relate to that. I, and in fact, when I started, I used to have her on my hip and I would be doing someone's make with her, wake up with her right there. And it was to me like the greatest joy that I could have a business and be a mom. So I kind of love that. It brings me back to the day. All right. So what are you excited about? What are you going to share with us and tell us a little bit about how you joined. How did you get into Lime Life? And tell us about skincare for you, how you prep your skin, all the good stuff. So it's kind of creepy and exciting at the same time. I was actually looking for um, anti-aging skincare. I had just had my daughter. She was two to three months old and I was just searching online. I wasn't really finding anything that I was interested in. And then Raleen Luna um, hit me up she actually knows my husband and they all went to church together and, they, and my husband grew up with her kids. And she just said, hey, you know, I want to tell you about this great business, about this great skincare and makeup. And so when she said skincare, it's like, oh, I've been looking for skincare. Um, but she actually wanted me to do the business side of it. So I said, mm, I don't really know. I, I don't think that's for me because I'm actually a photographer. I'm a published photographer. That's what I do full time. <laughs> And so I didn't think that I would be like a makeup guru or any of that. So I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't think so. But she said, just sleep on it overnight, you know, and pray about it and just let me know. And I said, okay. And the next day I was like, okay, sign me up. I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> and so that's how I kind of got started. I wasn't a thought. I didn't really know anything about Lime Life. I'm actually from the Bahamas, whole separate country. So I wasn't familiar with like anything American really. And so when she broke it down and explained it to me and I started actually using the products, like I've, I've fallen in love with everything. I've replaced every brand that I used to use with Lime Mike. So the quality speaks for itself. So I love it. I'm excited. I, um, I'm not a makeup artist, but I watch enough YouTube videos where it's muscle memory and I can do a bunch of crazy stuff because it's fun and it's exciting. And if this job wasn't fun and exciting, I wouldn't be doing it. So I really, really, really and truly enjoy it. Love that. <laughs> love that. All right. Tell us about your skincare. What did you fall in love with? Um, definitely the anti-aging. I am 29 years old. I will be 30 in January. And around the time I started, I was experiencing like premature wrinkles or the beginning of wrinkles. I had um, dark spots. I had um, uneven skin. So I, I was dealing with a lot of skin issues at the time, especially I just had my daughter. I wasn't sleeping. I had black um, dark circles underneath my eyes. And so I fell in love with the anti-aging serum, Sotox, and combining that with One Drop Wonder. Within, I want to say, six to eight weeks, all my premature wrinkles are gone. Um, about 90% of my dark, uh, dark under eyes are gone. Um, every skin issue, I had an issue with unbalanced skin, because I have a lot of different skin tone going on. That's just a part of my you know, ma makeup. Um, um, all that disappeared. I actually did a comparison photo recently and I look younger comparing 2017 to 2020. Mm -hmm. And so I, people already think I'm really young, but now they think I'm even younger. So that's awesome. <laughs> that is a great problem. So what cleanser do you use? What's your cleansing? What, how do you prep before makeup? Okay. So usually I 
come out the shower and do my makeup so I could just start my skin routine. I actually have been loving Power Star. That yes. is actually the men's face yes. cleanser. I love it because it has like a built-in exfoliant and I don't, I'm transparent. I don't always remember to do a face mask. So when I want to exfoliate, make sure I'm taking care of my skin, I would use Power Star. I use that like every other day, um, but I use Quench Cleanse every day. I really, really love that. Love it. Nice. Nice. Well, your yes. skin is beautiful. Beautiful. And are you yes. into the setting sprays too? Which, which setting sprays do you use? Primer and time setter? Everything. Awesome. Awesome. All, right, all, all the steps. What are we so doing? If I, what are we doing? Yeah, go ahead. So if I can give you like my steps, I would use um, Quench Cleanse, and then I would use my anti-aging serum, which is Sotox, and then I would use One Drop Wonder. And then to top it all off, I would use Skin Therapy, which is the moisturizer. So that is like my daily skincare routine. But when I'm ready to put on makeup, which is usually right after I'm dressed, then I would actually, because I have the makeup primer and I do like it first base, but since I started using the mm -hmm. sunscreen, I love it even more because it's a sunscreen, it's a makeup primer and it's a moisturizer in one. And when I tell you my makeup application with this is flawless, that's not even like a joke. I look airbrushed, I get compliments all the time. This is amazing. So I did actually you know, that, did you know that that mimics retinol. It's got chicory root in it, and it mimics what retinol does. So it's also anti-aging. There, there's four yes. in one. Incredible. Yes, I I love it. This <laughs> I recommend this over all the moisturizers and um, first face. So this is my go-to for sure. <laughs> and we didn't tell them you live in the desert, so your skin yes. is dry. You're in Vegas. It's so still 95 degrees. <laughs> and there's dirt so you've got to protect your skin your face Absolutely. looks so beautiful so yes you have a flawless canvas thank you <laughs> <laughs> well we're excited we can't wait to see what, what are we learning tonight what are we doing so in the spirit of fall i'm actually doing a fall makeup look ever since everyone else on the in their state started doing war, uh, warmer looks and the pumpkin spice lattes and everything i'm like you know i'm just gonna jump on the bandwagon because it's not going to get cold in Vegas for a few more weeks. And so I've been like pretending it's fall. So I'm, I've been switching everything over to like fall lips, fall eye colors, fall colors for my clothes. And so I definitely want to do a fall lip because I think that it's appropriate for the season. Yes. The fall look. Yes. yes. Love it. All right. Let's go. Okay. So I have on one eyebrow. I just took one off so I can show you on camera. <laughs> um, so um, of course I'm going to prime my face with the perfect sunscreen. Hmm. Come on, mama. I have a little one who's trying to navigate this video. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use the sun, perfect sunscreen to prime my face. I just need one pump. Okay. And actually, before I learned life, I never used a sunscreen. That sounds crazy because I've been a photographer in the desert for 10 years. <laughs> um, but I never forget it now. And I can definitely see a big difference in my skin. Oh, yeah. People don't notice about me, but I wasn't born with a birthmark, so the pigments in my skin changes color permanently in the sun. Sounds ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, so this started off as one spot, and it's like 70% of my body now, and it stopped spreading to my face when I started putting on sunscreen. So that's a blessing. Wow. Our sunscreen, right? Our sunscreen, yeah. That's exciting. Love that. Okay, so I always start with my eyebrows because I feel like my eyebrows make or break my makeup look just because... When I used to put them on like Sharpies, no matter how beautiful the eye look, the eyebrows always looked ridiculous and I could never like focus beyond that. So I started with my eyebrows to make sure like it is like the foundation of my makeup look. I actually use eyeshadow. Oh, yeah. So when I started doing my house, I learned that the eye eyebrows were the most important part of the face because they are what open up and bring attention to your eyes. And exactly. even though you're 29, it's so interesting to see that nobody has perfect brows. And I mean, you're very sparse on that right side. And wow, that looks so naturally beautiful. So and, and what color were you using? I'm using a corkable, which is number 32. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys can see better. So what I'd like to do is just take a spoolie and I like to brush through my eyebrows. I actually was born with thin brows. I have my dad's eyebrows. So I never had full brows. <laughs> actually, it's been a year and a half since the last time I got my eyebrows threaded. <laughs> wow. Wow. So I don't need it very often. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take an angled eyebrow brush and I'm, and I'm gonna dip that into a corkable. And I'm just going to start at the bottom and I'm gonna fill in. The, so one dip and then I take it and I flick it upwards because that is what fills in the brow. I don't dip back in because I don't want it to be overpowering. I really don't care. And so I don't really want dark eyebrows, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna take my time and fill it in. Because I've been doing my makeup so often, I've been practicing. It doesn't take me long at all to do my brows anymore. How long did it take you to get confident with your makeup? Because you did not come into this thinking you were going to be doing makeup, I'm sure, online. No, I didn't come into it thinking that at all. I was, I thought like, okay, I'm just gonna like post my link and that's it. No, <laughs> that's, that's not it. You know, because you wanna show people how it's done. And so in the beginning, I didn't know how to do half the things that I know now, like a cut crease or like defining my cheekbones and different things. Like, of course I watch YouTube videos, but I've always worn natural looking makeup because of the industry that I worked in. And so it took me maybe three months of like consistent doing my makeup to finally like refine and hone in. Wow. A little bit longer for the eyebrows. I hope I answered your question because it was kind of like cutting in and out. It did, it, and you did, yes. Just how long did it take you to feel confident when you didn't come in this thinking you were gonna be sharing makeup on YouTube? Our lives. Okay, so I'm actually a YouTuber, so I was, I'm used to the camera, I'm used to recording, and I love people. So I think the combination of all those things, I've, I've always been comfortable speaking in front of other people. I think what makes me nervous and what took time to build with Limelight was doing something I'm not great at. Aww. And so I'm not great at photography. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm great at photography. I'm not great at makeup. And so it took me, I want to say, consistently maybe two months of doing my makeup on live to get confident doing it where I feel like okay if I mess up I'm still a normal person I still can do this no one's going to be judging me like I'm showing everyday women how to do everyday makeup and so once I realized that and I had that mindset no matter if I come on here and I mess up or I fumble over my words I still know that I'm doing this because it's fun and I enjoy it absolutely that's awesome Okay, here. Okay, don't worry, it's not gonna take me long. <laughs> so after I'm done with my eyebrows, I like to go in with concealer. So this is our complete concealer. I personally use the shade number three, and I use that, an angle brush, to clean up the shape of my eyebrows. So even though I fill them in, when I'm putting on a full face of makeup, I take a little bit on an angle brush, and I just start cleaning up that look just to make sure that they look like sisters not twins just sisters mm -hmm. and make sure that my shape is defined and in the beginning this is what helped me a lot because i used to draw my eyebrows all different types of way and one would be thick and one would be thin but once i learned how to clean it up with the concealer i started realizing like okay even if i mess up a little bit in the filling in process i can i can clean it i can fix it with the concealer so I would just go on the concealer and I would just clean up underneath the bottom. I don't do the top, just the bottom. Did you just get your little sponges? Uh, this is actually a beauty sponge. Ah, okay. A dry one. Okay. Yes. So I'm gonna clean up the other one now. And this eyebrow has been on for like a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so just clean it up underneath. And then I like to drag the product downward because when I go in to kind of buff it out with my sponge, I'm not so close to my eyebrows where I would mess with the eyeshadow. Just enough to blend it out. And so that's what my eyebrows are looking like. Now, my next and last step in my eyebrows are, is actually using our Strike Rich Brow Gel. I use the shade Clear because I don't want to alter the color of the eyeshadow, so I use this. And it, this just locks my hairs in place, one, but it also makes my eyebrows look more realistic and real, the eyebrow hairs after I put the 
brow gel on because it's like it wets the hair so you can't really see the eyeshadow powder and it makes my eyebrows look like my own eyebrows versus a filled in eyebrow. You guys are welcome to put things in the chat. I'm pretty good at multitasking so I can see what you're writing and I can respond. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Right. Now, I always start off with my um, eyeshadow because it's, it's usually the thing that takes me the longest to do out of everything within my makeup routine. And I work pretty quick when I do it this way. So I'm gonna go right back in with my concealer and I'm gonna use this as a primer for my eyeshadow. So especially when I'm using all different shades and I want the eyeshadow to pop. And so when you put concealer on your lid, it's like you're color blocking the color of your eyelid and you're giving the eyeshadows more pigment. Even though they're very pigmented and I don't always have to do this step, I definitely do it just to make sure that my makeup stays on. With COVID, of course, I stay home. So when I put on makeup, I want to wear a I want to take selfies. I want to send pictures to my husband while he's at work. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure that I am maximizing the time that I have on my makeup. So I want it to last as long as possible. And, you know, you know, make the occasional trip to the mailbox so the neighbors might happen to see my makeup. You know, when you wear a good outfit you want people to see, it's the same thing with makeup. When I have to do a really cool makeup look, I have to post it everywhere. I have to make random trips to the mailbox. I have to run an errand. <laughs> yes, I have to make sure, like, my eye looks are seen and heard and get the attention because it's so fun. I love to do new things. Okay. So I always start off with a transition color, and no matter what eye look I do, I always do a transition color. I like to use something neutral enough where it's like not too light and it's not too dark, where I can use it for like 99% of my looks, unless it's like color specific. And that eyeshadow for me is Fortune Cookie. So it's number five. It's this one right here. It's just a light brown, and it's perfect to put right in the crease of my eyes. And so this is what I do. I just buff it back and forth with a blending brush just to add that color in my crease. So when I add the other colors, like my inner eyelid and my outer eyelid color, that they all just kind of blend together nicely and they complement each other. So this is fortune cookie. Hopefully I'm not going too slow or too fast for some people. So pretty. I just love watching those colors blend together um, and the way you're just, you know, doing a little circle action. Awesome. Yes. Yes, definitely. I've learned that blending is the difference between my makeup looking professionally done and like I just started doing makeup yesterday for the first time. <laughs> Madeline, you gotta learn how to use this thing. Yeah. Hi, hi. Oh, my husband's there. <laughs> Aww. Hi, husband. He just got home from work, so he's in the Air Force. Oh, awesome. Okay. So now that my transition color is in, I'm gonna, work, I start at the outer part of my eyes and I work my way inward. And so a corkable was actually the very first eyeshadow that I've owned with Lime Life. And I used to use that every single day as my transition color or just to pop some color in my crease just to say I have an eyeshadow. And so that's the same one I use for my eyebrows. And at the time I thought it was, oh, it's the perfect color for my transition. No, mm -hmm. now it's the perfect outer eye color. So we're gonna dip right back, I'm gonna use a fluffy brush. I'm gonna dip back into a corkable and I'm literally just gonna start stamping that on the outer part of my eye to give it some contrast and some depth. So that's what that's looking like. I'm just using tapping motions. I don't know if some of you have hooded eyes, but the older I'm getting, well, when I was younger, I didn't have like an eye crease. So when you look at me, you can see all of my eyeshadow, but as I'm getting older, I'm getting this crease on my eyes. So now what I have to do is I look straight and I see where the crease is and I make sure that whatever colors I'm applying to my eyelids, that they come outside of the crease so you can be able to see them properly because I didn't have to worry about that before. But now 
if I put it too low and I just look straight at you, you won't be able to see the color. So that's a little tip if someone is dealing with that same issue like I am. Not issue, but like getting older. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. Okay, so you just want to stamp that. I'm doing like C motions. This is my second color, Jamie. So my first color was fortune cookie and my second color is now a corkable. Pretty. Yes. And these eyeshadows are so pigmented and so versatile. I use it for my eyebrows. I'm using it for the outer parts of my eyes. And if it was the right color, I would use it as a bronzer to contour my face. So you can use the powders for like anything and everything. Trust me, I use them for like, I use an eyeshadow for blush. I use it for lipstick. I will put it on my lips and put a clear gloss on top if I'm looking for a specific color that I don't own. I find a way to multi-use products all the time. And these products are so pigmented and the quality is so amazing. You can use them for whatever you want. Okay, so this is what it's looking like right now. And what I like to do is take a small, it's like, the tapered blending brush this small, I don't know if you can see it. And I like to dip back into fortune cookie. And I'm going to blend out the edges. So where this dark color, a corkable, meets the transition color, which is the same one I'm using to blend, I will take this tapered blending brush, hopefully it's not too bright, you can see. And I'm going to just blend out that edge. And this is also a way to use a pop of color. Color. So let's say I don't want my make look too dark. Adding the color is going to lighten up the look just a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see it. Just hoping it's not too close. Okay. Okay. So you just want to do circular motions where the dark brown meets the lighter brown, and that's just blending the two colors together so it looks seamless. So that's all I'm doing right now. And this is what that's looking like. And then this is what it looked like without it. If you're a woman like me and in the beginning you didn't have makeup brushes, like don't, don't feel bad because I used to have like two makeup brushes for everything. I used to use my fingers, a sponge, it all. I even had, I even started at the dollar store. They have wet and wild brushes for one dollar. And they took me to a certain level and I did like it a lot. It's just somewhere to start, especially if you're new to makeup. But once you start doing it and you started realizing like, okay, I need this brush for that and that brush for this, um, then I would definitely recommend the Limelight brushes because they're amazing. They're like luxurious, heavy handled makeup brushes. And I, I don't know, I just love them. So yes, definitely recommend this type of makeup brush for this particular thing to blend out. If you don't have it, just go right back in with that first blending brush that you use. It's only to just make sure that those colors are seamless. Okay. Okay, so this is what my eyes are looking like right now. And now we're gonna fill in the inner part of our eyes. So I'm using a lighter color and I'm actually gonna put down a little bit more of concealer because that's going to help that color really pop. So I'm going to take, you can use the same one you use to clean up your eyebrows with. I personally have a third one. <laughs> there it is. So this is just a flat brush. I'm going to dip that right back into my concealer. I'm going to do one eye at a time so you guys can see. And I'm literally just going to carve out like a half circle. I'm going to blend it downward. You don't want to use a lot of product, just a little bit because you want to kind of define that shape. Good, and then you want to blend over that dark brown so it's not like blunt. They blend together. And what you can do is take your finger, excuse this one doesn't have a nail, <laughs> and you want to just pat it back and forth because that's going to blend the eyeshadow and the concealer. So when you put the other color on top, it's going to look really seamless and not like concealer sitting on top of eyeshadow, if that makes any sense. So this is what this eye looks like without it. Wow. Okay. Now, my third eyeshadow color is called Taupe for the Best. And let me tell you, at first I was like, I don't know about this because I'm warm tone, my hair is warm tone, everything about me is warm tone. <laughs> and this is more like a cooler brown. So at first when I got it, I was like, mm. I mean, I purchased it, but I was like, I don't know about this because 
It's a cool tone brown. I used to use warm tone ones, but when I mixed it with for that makeup look, it just it spoke for itself. So this is taupe for the best here. It's like almost like a gray brown. It's really pretty. And I'm gonna take a flat brush and I'm going to just start filling in the front with that color. And you wanna just color within the lines of where you put your concealer. You don't wanna go above it because you want your makeup look to look sharp, at least the front area. And that's actually how you do a cut crease which I learned for the first time in Lime Life, I, I did a challenge on Facebook and I was like, okay, tell me what you want me to do that I don't already do. And one girl challenged me and said, I want you to do a cut crease. And I looked at her like she was crazy <laughs> because I didn't know how to do it. And she is a makeup artist and she does. And so I was okay. And I went on there, it was Christmas of last year, I remember, because I was doing a, a, a neon green look. I don't know what I was thinking. And I did a cut crease and she was in the comments and she walked me through it. She said, just focus on the shape. And every, and I, every time I do it, I just tell myself, just focus on the shape. Because once you focus on the shape that you're creating, it becomes easy. So I just make my half circle and I blend it down and then that's it. So don't be afraid to take chances, to take risks, to learn something new because makeup is supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be exciting. I didn't, I didn't start wearing makeup until I was 19, and my mom doesn't wear makeup. Now she wears all dying life, <laughs> but she didn't wear makeup growing up. So I didn't grow up in a household with a mom that wore makeup. So when I told her I was interested in wearing makeup, she literally brought me um, two brown eyeshadows and a lip gloss. <laughs> and that was it. And I wore two brown eyeshadows and a lip gloss for like three years. And so I definitely... I'm, I was, I'm a girly girl, but I wasn't a makeup girl. And so I learned all of this just practicing, watching videos, and just trying what to try were, something what new. Favorite, what were your favorite videos to watch? Like, where did you start when you started watching videos? Okay, so I would watch Get Ready With Me. So that's what they're calling YouTube. So a girl would sit in front of my camera, very casual, and she would just say, okay, I'm going to do my makeup, I'm going to do my hair, and let's just talk, let's be girls. And so that felt so personable and it felt like all the pressure was off to learn versus doing like a makeup tutorial where we're like professionals so she's talking she's engaging you she's making you feel like you're her best friend but she's showing you her favorite tips on how to do makeup and that is how I learned I felt like I was just talking and having fun with my girlfriend and so that's that's how I learned the best the most and that was on YouTube's on YouTube yes got it so cool love that yes I do get ready with me all the time. Uh -huh. I love them. I love that you didn't even start wearing makeup till you were 19. I mean, look at you go, girl. Look at you drama, amazing <laughs> makeup. I mean, it's just incredible. Thank you. You make it look very easy too, which I think it has a lot to do with the blendability of the products, you know? Yes. Because <laughs> everything just so seamless. They mellow together easily. They're easy to blend. I've used brands that weren't easy and trust me, it does affect the outcome of the makeup. If the product's not easy to blend, it doesn't look professional, doesn't look well done. And I've, I struggled with that for a long time and I didn't realize it was the quality and the pigment until I switched and these are just buttery smooth. They're so easy to use. And so it definitely helps because you, you, can, you can see and you can feel the quality. And that's not just me being a sales rep. That's me being like an honest girlfriend because I don't sell what I don't like. <laughs> uh -huh, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to type in the colors you're using. So the first eyeshadow you used was? Fortune Cookie, which is number five. Okay, Fortune Cookie, number five. And then what was next? Number 32, A Corkable. Okay, number 32, uh-huh. I don't remember what Toe for the Best is, okay, but it's it. Toe for the Best, yes. So you just have three colors on and then the number three concealer? Yes. Okay. That's it so far. <laughs> okay, before I do my inner corner highlight, which is going to be a separate um, eyeshadow color, I like to go with my foundation and my concealer because I like to set my face before I do it. So now I'm going to go in with my foundation. I'm in the shade Shinto 3, which is like a warm undertone. I absolutely love this. This is the only foundation I've, I've ever worn that doesn't oxidize on me. So I would color match in the store. I purchase it. I love a foundation. I get home and I'm a different color. 
but this does not oxidize. So that means like when I put this on and I wear this throughout the day, it's not going to change colors on me. <laughs> I love that. I don't think you understand. Like I used to get so mad, like, why am I orange? Why am I orange? I used to call myself a oompa loompa because it just changed on me and I didn't like that. And I never understood until like, are you using the foundation to oxidize? And I'm like, I didn't think about that. Wow. That's exactly what's happening. And this one is actually my perfect match. I actually just wear this with eyebrows and mascara and lip gloss. And people think I'm not wearing any makeup. And they get compliments on my skin all the time. I'm like, thank you so much. <laughs> um, but it's our foundation. So I like to go in with my sponge being dry because it gives me a full coverage. If I went in with a damp, then it would give me more of like a, a sheer to medium co coverage depending on how um, damp my sponge is. So I like it to be full coverage. So it looks like full skin unblemished full skin and for me I like to dip it in once and I like to smear it around because I feel like it's blending out the product and I'm not using too much at one time in the beginning I was using I needed a new foundation like <laughs> every two months and I was like okay I'm doing something wrong which I was I learned to just blend it around and then pound it in place to get rid of my smear marks and it gives me a full, beautiful coverage that I love so much. None of us had ever used a wax-based foundation, so it was a huge learning curve, and we were all using way too much, and it was making us look older. And, and once we realized, you know, just use like 25% of that, it was like, it, it's, it's your own skin. It looks like skin. It's, it's just amazing. I, three years later, I still put it on and I want to do half my face and just look because I don't look like I have anything on. I just look like I have perfect skin. Yes, exactly. And you can see the texture in your skin without seeing, like let's say you want to cover blemishes without seeing the blemishes. So it looks like you have naked skin. It's so lightweight. It's breathable and the coverage is amazing. Beautiful. Only the celebrity makeup artists had access to it. So we didn't even have access to this. If we would have wanted it, we would have had to go on through a company like Alcone and it would have, you would have to buy in bulk. Like it just never was available to the public. This is like the greatest gift we have for our customers is, and, and anybody can get a sample. We're, we're happy to send samples so you can play with it and try it, but it's money back guaranteed. So you should just get it. And we have a color match that we can do. We have a quiz that's like 99.5% accurate. And then we get you in some good daylight. So we just make sure that you buy the right color. But if you don't, they'll exchange the color for you. It's, it's an incredible company. No questions asked. No questions asked. And I believe we have less than a 1% return rate. So most of our customers actually enjoy the products and they don't return them. Exactly. That looks flawless. Thank you. I love it so much. You have no idea. It's like my one makeup product I can't live without. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Okay. So next I'm going to go back in with my complete concealer in the shade number three. I don't use a concealer to conceal anything because our foundation is so high coverage it gets rid of whatever under eye bags I would have so I use found I use this concealer to actually highlight so I bring light into my face so I'm going to go back in with that flat brush that I used earlier and I'm going to put some underneath my eyes mm -hmm. and the bridge of my nose now our foundation and our concealer, you can put on as much as you want and it never looks cakey. And that's the one thing I love about it so much. It's so buildable. So let's say I put on this first layer and I'm like, oh, it looks really great. It looks a little too natural. I want to look, you know, glammed up because there are days and I just, I don't want to look natural. I want to look like I did a full beat. And so I would put on a layer and I would blend it out with my sponge and I would kind of see where I'm at. And then I would go with another layer and I blend it out and that would be perfect. That's the coverage that I need. But like 95% of the time, I don't have to do that. So I just put it on like this and I just take my sponge and I just blend it out. So I just tap it back and forth to kind of press it into my skin and blend out the edges. And that's all I need to do. Just blend. So it's already blending flawless and it, it's amazing, honestly. If you have my skin tone and my hair, if you put 
concealer on the your cupid's bow on your chin and you wonder why you look like a lion because I look like Mufasa for about seven years. It's because when I put concealer on my cupid's bow on my chin in combination with that, I look like a lion. And I, I know it's true because I was Mufasa for one, for one Halloween and that's exactly the makeup that I did. So that's all I knew that I look like a lion. So if you want to know a trick and you're my skin tone with my hair type, just do under eyes and the bridge of your nose, and that's all you need to do. Okay, and now I'm going to set my makeup, and I use our Perfect Translucent Powder. Now it looks white in the pan. Oh, that's not the right one. It looks white in the pan, but it goes on perfectly clear. So this sets your makeup so it doesn't transfer, it doesn't move, and it just makes it last a lot longer. And so I'm gonna use a fluffy brush. And as a photographer, I can, and I take pictures of myself every single day. That's not a vanity thing, I promise. <laughs> this has no flashbacks. That means that if I use a camera with flash, you're not going to see like a white powder all over my face. That's why it's called an HD powder. And so I actually recommend this powder to a lot of my clients and my followers because if they're going to take pictures with me especially, I always tell them you really want to set your makeup. And so I would recommend using our Perfect Translucent Powder. And I love that it doesn't matter how light or how dark you are. Everybody yeah. can use that shade. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm so used to reading comments. We want to be okay. So now we're going to add um, taupe for the best underneath our eyes. When I first started doing makeup, I never did makeup underneath my eyes. But once I started doing it, I now know that I cannot complete my makeup look without doing it. So I'll show you what I do, and it's very very simple. I can find the right brush. Okay. Okay. So this is an angle brush here. So this is good for someone who doesn't know how to do a wing. You can just flick out and bring it in, and that's perfect to do a wing with eyeshadow. But I'm going to take, oh, for the bath, sorry, right here on this brush, this angle brush, and I'm just gonna put this underneath my eyes and line my eyes. When I first started doing it, I was like, whoa, this is too much. This is, you have on way too much makeup. But when, you, when you're when you done, when you put on your eyeliner and your mascara, it looks absolutely amazing. Trust me. Very smoky, very sultry. Yes, and with brown eyes like I have, it really does make my eyes, my eye color pop. So I really love that. Okay, before I continue, if you have mascara, if you're doing your makeup with me, I'm gonna put this in between my thighs. That sounds so weird, but it's gonna heat up the mascara, so by the time that I'm ready to use it, it's gonna apply a lot smoother and better. And that's any mascara you use, not just ours. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the inner corner highlight. So this is the fourth and last eyeshadow color that I'm gonna be using. This one is called Gold School. And I use Gold School in the corners of my eyes to make my eyes look more open and pop. So it's this one right here old school and I put it right here in the corner of my eye. This is really good for someone who does their makeup in the morning before work because for me it takes a little bit for my face not to look like I'm still tired and I'm so sleepy. <laughs> my, my husband calls it grandpa face. <laughs> Sweet man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's so amazing. <laughs> and so when I put this on the inner corners of my eyes, it makes my eyes look more open and more awake and more fresh. And it also completes my eye look. I love it. So just use a lighter color on the inner corners of your eyes and that's the trick. Okay, so my eyes are done. Let's move on to contouring. So I don't necessarily bronze to warm up my face, but I bronze to, I have, no matter how slim I am or no matter what my weight is, I have big cheeks. That's just a part of my DNA. It's hereditary. And so my daughter has it. She has the cutest cheeks ever. And so my face usually looks slim until I smile. And then my face gets twice as big. So I use bronzer to contour to slim up my face. It's like adding a shadow to make something look less big or less obvious. 
And so that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm, I'm actually in the shade number four. Whenever I'm doing more of a neutral look, I'll use four. If I'm using a lot of like reds and like warmer tones, then I would use number five, which has like a red undertone. Thank you, Deborah. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to go in with this contoured brush, bronzer brush. It's like a tapered brush. I'm going to dip that in. And I'm just going to go, so if you suck in your face like a fish, you're going to see a line. I go slightly above that line. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's how I contour. So I do right here. Don't worry. Remember blending. It's going to look good. I do my jawline because I have a mommy chin now. I also buff it back and forth underneath here too. And I have a Rihanna forehead. Us Caribbean girls, we just come with a forehead. This is just a part of island life. So then I just buff my forehead as well because that makes it look smaller. Get rid of some of that real estate. So I buff that over my forehead. So the easiest way to think about it is to do an E or three when you contour. And I just buff my brush without adding any more product. I buff that back and forth and that's what blends it out. I don't mind the bottom part being sharp, but the top part when I add like highlight and blush, it's gonna blend out the line. It won't look as harsh, but I definitely wanna blend the product so you don't have like a bulk just sitting there. Okay, and then I actually put a little bit on my brush and then I just stamp the sides of my nose and that contours my nose. I already have a button nose, I would say, but I feel like if I don't do it, it doesn't complete the look. I watch too much videos, I do my makeup way too many times and if I forget to do it, I notice it. And so it just helps with the overall look, makeup look. So I just do that, stamp the sides. If you ever feel like you put too much, just go back in with your sponge but has a little bit of your foundation and buff it. I didn't think that I did, but I'm just using it to demonstrate to show you. So you can do that. Okay. This is probably a lot more makeup than a lot of women wear, but I'm okay with that because this is a full look. This is a full glam look versus like a more natural look. If I did one of those, it would be like five steps. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I do is I highlight. So I like, so highlighting is putting um, like a shimmery type of product on the high points of, you see, you can see it already catching the light right here. So I'll put it right here. I'll put it right here on the tip of my nose and a little bit here. I might keep it slow. So wherever the light picks up is where you would highlight. And I love using bronzer number one in combination with number six blush called Glowing. And it actually came together in our birthday collection in February because Limelight turned five years. Limelight by Alcone turned five years in February. And this launched as a duo. And so bronzer number one is too light for my everyday use. So I use this to highlight and it has a shimmer in it. So I would just buff the blush and the bronzer together. And then I would just run this back and forth on the high points of my cheeks. And you can already see it picking up and shining. It's so pretty. I use this to highlight. And remember, you can use eyeshadow for this, you can use blush for this, you can do whatever you want. There are no rules. I like to use um, gold colors too, so I can even use gold school, like a very little bit of it, on the high points of my cheeks and my tip of my nose to do a highlight as well. So if you want to multi-use products, that's a great way to do it. So you do it at the cupid's bow to make my top lip and the points of my lip stand out and it helps to make my lip look fuller. Some women do this, I do it as well. I would just take some and put it right here on my brow bone to make that pop too. So just adding just a little bit. So pretty. Thank you. Sometimes I overdo it and I go back in one more time because <laughs> I, like, I like to get bronze goddess. I just, I just love it. I love it. Okay, so next we're going to go in with our blush. And my newest blush and my latest obsession is Keen. And Keen is like this coral mixed with pink mixed with gold. 
and it sounds crazy, but it's beautiful. So this right here, thank you, Deborah. This is Keen, and this is a perfect blush color for fall because I feel like no matter what makeup look you're going for, if you're going for a fall makeup look, it's going to complement them all. So you can use oranges, browns, reds, olive greens, no matter what colors you use for fall, Keen is the perfect blush to bring out your cheeks and it complements them all. So this is Keen, I'm taking on this brush. And Keen, I can, I can put on a thousand layers of Keen and it never is too much, it never overdoes it. It's like so perfect. It makes everything just look so beautiful. So this is Keen. See, it is gorgeous. I love it. Okay, so before I move forward with like any other part of my makeup, here is where I set my face. So I'm going in the time setter. Um, this is more like normal to dry skin. If you have oily skin, then you would use, it's not oil slick, what is it called? Blair, what is it called? Um, the time setter? Um, Not time setter, ball but ball strike. Ball strike. I said ball <laughs> strike. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I love it. So you want to set your face. I use quite a bit because I'm wetting all the powders in my face. So when you wet them and then you let it dry, it no longer looks like powder when it sets. It just looks like skin. So even though you might think, oh, she put on way too much blush, she put on way too much bronze, she put on way too much highlight. When I wet it, like I saturate it, not a lot, just, you know, and then I set it, when it dries, it all just looks like my skin. You see that? It doesn't look like powder anymore. It just looks like I just, I was born this way. Mm. So I, I love it. I love it a lot. And it just takes about 20, 30 seconds to dry and we're good to go. And this also preserves your makeup. So this will allow your makeup to stay on for up to 16 hours. I've worn my makeup longer than that. I've done weddings that are longer than that. That sounds crazy, but I have. I've worked longer shifts. <laughs> and I can attest that my makeup stays on. I have a wedding on the 20th that's from like, I think it's like 7 a.m. to like 8 o'clock at night. So I will be using that when I do my makeup because my makeup stays on. It doesn't fade. It looks fresh like I just did it. I love using our setting spray. Okay, so this is what my face is looking like. Now I'm gonna go in with our eyeliner. So I'm using the Enduring Eyeliner Pencil in black. We have it in brown and we have it in nude. I love using the black. So I'm just gonna put some in the, my waterline. And it's very pigmented and beautiful. I've had this same one since last year. <laughs> I love it. It just glides on, you know, it's just, it's, it's the greatest liner we've ever had. It's a it's gem. It's so cool. So mm -hmm. smooth, so beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to do my eyelashes. So I'd like to use a lash curler. You can use any one. We have one at Lime Life. I've been using this. I got in one of my subscription boxes. My eyelashes grow straight out. So even if I put eye, um, mascara on them, you can see them. I have the baby's lashes ever. So I go in with a lash curler and I literally just press it so my eyelashes go upward so when you put on mascara you can actually see them and that's one of the reasons why I wear falsies a lot you know just to make my eye look, look more dramatic and more wake up. but now you can actually see my lashes okay so my my mascara has been warming up in my thighs this whole time you can put it under the armpit you can put it underneath the lady bits um and it will work just fine so our mascara has little fibers in them that connects to your eyelashes and they lengthen them and let me tell you this is a game changer if you have lashes like me that they don't exist this makes me look like i want falsies so if i'm not wearing falsies and i want my eyelashes to look full to look long to look beautiful i will put on two coats so i'm using two coats today so i'm using a little magnifying mirror so i can get close and i like to start at the very tip of my lashes first to add the length and then when, I, when I'm done with that, I will do it in the, I will put the mascara on in the base. I think this step to me is what really defines my eyes because I don't have lashes. So this is what completes it. If I were to do a whole makeup look and I don't put on mascara, you can tell, especially mm -hmm. bottom lash mascara. 
and you put eyeshadow underneath your eyes and your waterline down here and you put mascara on after it looks so beautiful it's like a total transformation okay so that's one coat i had the smallest lashes y'all <laughs> I really don't. And you know what actually helped me? I put One Drop Wonder on my lash line. Um, I had a very bad experience um, 4th of July last year where I actually went to get my lashes professionally done, um, like lash extensions for the very first time ever. And I had the worst case of pink eye ever. <laughs> Both eyes, a bacterial and a allergic reaction. I had seven optometry appointments to get rid of it and help my eyes heal and it actually got rid of half of my lashes like they were missing because when i went to the er the day after i got my lashes done they had to rip them out because the it, it was just all bad and so i didn't have lashes so i put one drop wonder on my lash line mm -hmm. and by the next the following week when i went in for like my third or fourth appointment mm -hmm. i actually got complimented by my optometrist because she was like wow your lashes are growing in so well they're so beautiful like what are you using she asked me like what are you using wow. on your lashes to grow them back and i was like i'm using one drop one i told her all about it and what it does and she was amazed she said that never happens because when you came in here your lashes were bald that's what she told me <laughs> and yeah they grew my lashes back so quickly and they're more full than they've ever been so that if you're someone like me and you don't have a lot of lashes or your lashes are thin use some one drop wonder on your eyelashes it, trust me it works so well how many coats yes. do you do? pardon me how many coats do you do i do two okay yeah i do two if I do three, it gets a little, um, that's, that's diva mode. <laughs> diva mode enabled if I do three. That's awesome. Yes, Darnell, just with your finger on the lash line, rub it in. You just need one drop between both eyes for the one drop wonder. It works really, really well. So now I'm going in with my second coat and I'm focusing now more on the bottom part of my lash line and I'm pushing the product through. Thank you, Sandy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see my lashes now. They exist. They're there, I promise. <laughs> okay. We're almost done, ladies. So much fun. I could watch you all night. <laughs> Thank you. I used to sound like Minnie Mouse. When I had my daughter, I guess all the hormones, my voice got deeper. My laugh completely changed because I used to sound like a hyena. I literally was told that my whole life. I got voted best laugh in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but nice. now everyone says my, my voice sounds like more calming than like oh, high pitch. <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate that. While she's doing her lashes, um, y'all tell us your favorite tip. I'm curious, what was your favorite tip that you learned? I know all of you just loved learning about One Drop Wonder for your eyelashes. It grows your brows too. Um, yes. Many hairs, it's gonna grow. So. And your mustache. <laughs> and your mustache. <laughs> That's so true, so true. Yes, try it, Terry. I, th I definitely think it'll work. It's amazing. It does so many different things. I actually use One Drop Wonder. My husband, he, uh, he power lifts now. He has been for the last two years. And he has like the weight bar. He has like a whole like uh, bruise on his back where he lifts so much weight. He's in the thousand pound club now. He's excited. <laughs> He's about to be in the two, uh, 2000 pound club for wow. lifting weights. But it created like a, like a mark on his back. And I've been using a combination of, um, 40 care cream and one drop wonder on it and it is lightened it tremendously so our products are just for everything thank you thank you very much okay so now that my mascara is done let's move on to the lips and then we're finished I promise. <laughs> okay 
So I don't know if some of you saw the poster and saw what the outcome is supposed to look like. And let me tell you, especially because we just got, yes, Jamie tried to cut crease. You're going to like that. Especially because we just launched all the new lip liners. I bought them all. So yeah, I'm so excited. And so um, the lip combination I did in the, in the picture was lip liner, dark nude, and lipstick, moon pie. Oh, that's a good tip, Lori. Um, but I want to show you that you can use any different one. I'm still going to do um, a lip liner and moon pie, but I'm just showing you my favorites. I'm going to show you my three favorite liners right now and my three favorite lip products because any one of them will go with this lip look, this eye look. And so we have peanut butter cup, salted caramel, and moon pie. So those are the three that I recommend for fall colors. They're absolutely amazing and they're really beautiful. So if you don't own a fall lip color, any one of these are going to be perfect. If you want to go dramatic and crazy, then I definitely recommend chocolate ganache, which is this one here. It's the darkest color. Let me tell y'all, that is amazing. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to be using moon pie today like I did in the picture. And then any one of these lip liners will work for me. And two out of the three of these are, we just launched those last week. So um, we have Honey. This one is like my everyday lip color that I, I love. I can't live without this one now. I just got it and I've been using it every day. So this is Honey. Um, the second one that can work would be um, Dark Nude. So this is the one I usually use. It's a little light, but it works for any lip color. So I'm not going to be using that one today. And then I have Cinnamon. So it's between cinnamon and honey, and any one of these will work. So I'm just going to go in with honey because why not? Okay, so if you don't have lip liners, I would definitely recommend getting one because they extend the lip life of your lipstick. So if your lipstick usually lasts you four hours, five hours, putting on a lip liner will actually extend up to like six to eight hours to extend the life of your lip your lipsticks. They define your lips to make them look more full and to make them look more symmetrical. And that's the reason why I do it. I don't need it for fullness, but I need it so my lips look even because I have that uneven issue. Okay, these ones are self-sharpening. So I did use this already. So you can see the tip is not sharp. So I would push down on it to give me some more product. And then I would put the cap on and twist till I hear a click. And now my lip liner is perfectly sharpened. So I'm going to start off with my top lip. I like to start with the points of my lip right here. I like to draw what I call little mountain peaks. Because that's actually the shape of my lips. So I draw my mountain peaks. Just the top. And then I would go underneath my lip. So my lip starts right here. I'm actually going to go slightly under that to give my bottom look more of a full look. So that's what I do to make my bottom look, look full. So I only overline the very bottom of my lip, not the sides. And just by a little bit so it's not noticeable. And then I just connect from the inner corners of my lips to all four corners. If you really want your lipstick to last longer, you can fill in your entire lip with your lip liner and then put your lipstick on top. I'm going to do about 50% of the top and 50% of the bottom and then put my lipstick. I can kiss my daughter. I can drink tea. I don't drink coffee. I can drink water and my lipstick does not come off and I love that. I just have an issue with like lipstick being here after I eat. I'm like, what is, how did that even happen? Okay. All right, so now that my lips are filled in, I'm sorry if it was bright. We're gonna add moon pie on top. And moon pie, I would describe as Hershey's chocolate. Not the dark chocolate, the regular one. It gives me that vibe. It 
there's a reason why they call them enduring lip colors because they literally will last me at least eight hours. I would always put my lipstick in my purse and I never have to take it back out and reapply. So beautiful. Just out of habit. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I'm gonna purposely overlap my lips on accident because I wanna show you a little trick to fixing it. Okay, so I purposely overlined the sides of my lips because I wanna show you a trick that I've learned. Most women tell you to use concealer. I disagree, respectfully. I like to use I like to use foundation, actually, because it's the same color as my skin. Concealer is usually too light, so it makes your lips stand out as if you clean them up to make them look more defined. So I like to go in with foundation instead. So I'm going to use that same ankle brush that I use for my eyebrows. I'm going to put some of that on my foundation, sorry, on my brush, and I'm going to just slowly... Put that along my lips and drag it down to blend it out. You should try it. It's really, really pretty. Honestly, I never, even though I see a lot of women in certain colors, like I never really know what it's going to look like on me until I try it. And trust me, some of the colors I'm like, I don't know if that's for me are the very colors that I've fallen in love with and I wear every single day because they're just unexpected. They're all really pretty. And even though I own like 12 browns, every brown is so different that you can wear it and make a completely different makeup look. So definitely try Moon Pie, it's pretty. I don't own s'mores. I just saw someone put s'mores down there. I don't have that one but I own every one other than s'mores. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of choices. So, absolutely. Oh, yes. And you can't go wrong. You really can't go wrong. Gorgeous. Just Sorry, gorgeous. I like to put that in. And that's it. <laughs> that's how I create my fall full face makeup look like I mentioned this is like a lot of makeup for like the everyday woman but I'm not the everyday woman one and two when I do a, a natural look I use a lot less makeup so this is literally like me being me <laughs> I love it <laughs> thank you so if you had to do just an everyday face what would you be your like top five products what would you use every day Okay, that's easy. So I would do eyebrows, which would be filling in with eyeshadow. I would do foundation. I would use concealer. I would use blush and I would use a lipstick. That's it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. And you can actually take that gorgeous lip color and move it right up to your cheeks and eyes. It's yes. so versatile, so incredibly versatile. Well, you are beautiful. You are such an incredible, like walking poster child for lawn life. I can't That's imagine it. that people would not want to try what you're wearing. And thank you, thank you for your thank endless you. tips, your endless tips. And um, yeah, so so the beauty of this, let me just, un if you guys have any questions, we are open for questions. I'm gonna take the spotlight off just so that if anybody, uh, has a question, we can ask a question. I think I just removed the spotlight. Yes, I did. Okay, and now it looks like I'm recording. So I've been recording you, um, showing everybody what we're doing. Um, but here's the beauty, here's the beauty. All right, we're checking out now, so hang tight, everybody. Um, the beauty of this is anybody can use these products and not have to be a professional. You don't have to have all these special skills um, and it's all very affordable. And, and I think that's what women love is that you can try things and that you don't have to feel like you have to break the bank in order to, to get the things that you love. Um, you know, that's why I said, what five things do you wear? So, you know, we've got a skin confidence collection, you know, and again, get with your beauty guide. I know a lot of people watch the playbacks because these are so fabulous. I mean, I just, I have like a 
a notebook full of ideas to try for myself. Um, but get with your beauty guide. Start with some of the collections. We've got a Simply Pretty collection that's like right at $100. It gives you just the basics. We've got um, our teen collection, which is like our starter collection. And with both of those, money goes to our Brighter Together, which helps women all over the country and all over the world. Um, this month, uh, next month, we'll be celebrating um, our anniversary and, and we'll get to hear how much money we've raised and all the lives that this company touches. So just know that that you know, there are ways to um, be able to use these amazing products and give back at the same time, which everyone loves. So be sure, be sure to get with your beauty guide so that if you wanna try some of these things, remember it's money back guaranteed. Next Thursday, um, just as excited with Ashlyn as I am with Karen. Uh, Karen it was the personal uh, makeup artist for Laura Mercier and uh, she lives in New York City and she's had her hands on everybody famous. So I love getting to learn from the celebrity makeup artists because they're all in line life. But I also love that women like Ashlyn who never had any training or, or prior experience came into this and they found that they have this incredible talent uh, for putting these products on because of, you see how easy they are to apply. So be sure, thank you, thank you for all. Of, I mean, we had like 30 on live and, and again, it will turn into a YouTube and we have a YouTube channel. Just go to Blair Billings and you will see all of our incredible beauty guides that some are celebrity pro makeup artists, some are just everyday women who have learned to be pro makeup artists because of the use of the product. I mean, when someone says, how do you become a pro? You do what Ashlyn does. You practice every single day. You get good at your, your skill. I mean, the only way to learn these products is just to experience them and to use them. But I can tell you, most of us came from a different line and there is absolutely no comparison on how easily these apply. So Try some, get with your beauty guide, get some samples if you need to, or just get the things that she recommends because I promise you she won't steer you wrong. And you have always money back guaranteed, happiness guaranteed, Leaping Bunny certified, everything is vegan. Uh, there's very little that's not vegan in our line. Everything is basically made in the United States, but a few items. I mean, they everything about this company is um, incredible. You will absolutely love these products. Women fall in love with these products. Um, and and they, they start sharing them for us because they're, they're using it every day. So thank you, thank you, thank you to Ashlyn. You were fabulously phenomenal. I love when thank you come you. and share with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And everybody learned so many great ideas. And um, we will be back here next Thursday, same place, same time. Uh, an incredible Zoom party is what I call these. We get to hang out together and learn and just uh, invite your guests, invite your clients because everybody should hop on these um, to learn and to share. You know, whether you're learning or sharing, either or sharing with your clients or learning for yourself, this is how we work our business. This is how we collaborate and work together. Um, you know, this is the beauty of what we do is we can build a business online and work together. And we've been doing this since March. We have done this. Uh, we were doing it twice a week. Now we do it once a week. So just know we're here Thursday night, 7 p.m. Unless you hear different. And we're just so glad that you came and hung out with us tonight. So have a blessed night, everyone. Thank you again, all that joined. And yes, yes, yes. Hi, everybody. It's good to see everybody's beautiful faces. I feel like I've been checked out for months and it's been a week, but um, just excited to, to be here with all of you guys. You, 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 you are all so special to me. So thanks everybody for your love and support over the last week. And I, I'm excited to see you guys again soon. Um, if you're a beauty guide, and uh, I'm probably going to hop on and do a live uh, in our, 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 our team page. So uh, hop on in there in just a few if you'd like to. And um, I appreciate everybody who joined us here live. Y'all have a great night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.